Hi everybody and welcome to this video on probability. In this video we're going to have a look at counting again. So last video we had a look at the fundamental counting principle which told us the number of ways to order events is just the product of the number of ways of doing each of those. So now we're going to have a look at for the next few videos at a few different counting techniques for different cases. The first case that I would like to look at is counting with and without repetition. So what we mean is um, you are allowed to repeat a letter versus or letter or number of choice versus you are not allowed to repeat it. So for example, if we had a word space and we wanted to know how many five letter words can we make from space and we are allowed to repeat letters, then we could have a word, for example, like, and it's just a silly example, it's S, 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 assuming that all combinations are counted at word. So this year, where we're repeating S is completely allowed with repetition and also something like um, maybe um, C, Okay, so when we're talking about repetition, you are allowed to use a selection more than once. Now, um, let us first do that case. So again, we have five letters, so we want to know how many five letter words. So we have one, two, three, four, five letters to choose from. And then we're going to use the fundamental counting principle. How many options do we have for the first um letter so we allow to use any of the letters so we have our five options um for the second one for the second letter how many options do we have again because repetition is allowed we allow to use all five letters so five again and so on and so forth for the third fourth and fifth letter because repetition is allowed we allowed we have five options for each of the case so uh, the number of combinations that we have if our five letter words with repetition then is five to the power of five, if we have to simplify that. Now let us look at the case of no repetition. So here we are assuming that once you use a letter, you cannot use it again. So an example of a word is maybe paces. Okay, that's using all of the letters once or even a sips. Okay, so I'm just ordering, but you can only use a letter one, so there's no repetition. So again, we want to have a five digit, uh, a five um, digit or five length word. So for the first option, um, for the first one, we can choose any one of the five letters. So we're choosing one of those five letters. For the, second for the second letter, we cannot choose the one that we have just chosen because no repetitions are allowed. So we now have only four options for the second case. For the third letter, we aren't allowed to use the previous two letters that have been used. So we only have three left to use. And for the fourth letter, Again, we cannot use any of the ones previously, so we only have two options. And then finally, for the last letter, we we'll only have one option left, the one that we have not used. Okay, so this year, if we simplify it, we write it as five with an exclamation mark called factorial. We'll go on to understand what this factorial notation means in a second, but let us just reiterate the process. So if repetition is allowed, then that number that we're using doesn't change because we're allowed to repeat the numbers. So for all digits, they have the same number. If repetition is not allowed, then each, each of the following letters is deducting one because we cannot use the one from the previous round. Both of them use the fundamental counting principle to get there, just that with repetition, we have more options, and without repetition, each time we use a letter, we are decreasing our options for the next letter. Now, what is this five factorial? It's not five screened out. It's called factorial notation, and it's a way to write 
this product without always writing it out. So in general, n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way to, until you get one. So you keep on decreasing it. So if I had to do an example, two factorial will be equal to two times one. Three factorial will be equal to three times two times one. Four factorial will be equal to four times three times two times one. Five factorial will be equal to five times four times three times two times one, and so on and so forth. So you can have a factorial of any number, whole number, and then that is then how do we get it? So it helps us with um, writing out this whole product without doing the long thing is we can simplify to factorial. Also, if you have a look at your calculator, there is a factorial button that if you put five factorial, you'll get what is five times four times three times two times one. Um, so yes, please practice writing out different factorials and understanding what does that mean. Okay, so let's do an exercise. So it says, how many ways can we make a six digit code? And we're assuming out of digits zero to nine with repetition. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six. So the fundamental counting principle for the six digits, it's gonna be the product of each of the options for each digit. So let us ask ourselves, how many options do we have for the first digit? Now, there's the number of options from zero to nine is 10 options. So for the first one, we have 10 options. Now repetition is allowed. So a six digit code like zero, 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 zero is allowed. So how many options do we have for the second letter? It is also 10. For the third one, 10. Fourth one, 10. Fifth one, 10. Sixth one, 10. So the total number of ways for us to make a six digit code with repetition is 10 to the power of six. Okay, let us deal with the case with no repetition. So once again, we have, um, six digits, one, two, three, four, okay, I've got one too many. And again, we're using the fundamental principle. So we're gonna multiply the number of options for each case. So how many options do we have for the first digit? Well, there are 10 digits. So at the beginning, we can choose any one of the 10. Then for the next one, how many options do we have for the next one? Well, we can't use the one that we used in the first digit, so then we have one less option, which is nine. How many options do we have for the next one? We have eight, because we can't use the previous two. For the next one, we have seven, six, and five. So unfortunately, this one here is not equal to 10 factorial because it doesn't go all the way to one, but if you want it to, it's 10, 10 factorial, is this, I just want to show you, you don't have to do it like this if you don't want to, just in case you want to use this. That is what 10 factorial is over. And if we divide it by four factorial, so four times three times two times one, then what we get is that the four, uh, let's do this, that the four cancels out with the four, the three cancels out with the three, the two cancels out with the two, the one cancels out with one, and what we left with is what that is. So you can, if you wanted to, write it as 10 factorial divided by four factorial, or you could just type out what is 10 times nine. So 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five, which is 151,200. So you can choose between writing, if you want to write it in factorial notation in that form, but if that's a bit confusing, then just type that out into your calculator and you'll be able to get the answer. Okay, so let's have a look at one more question. So how many ways can we arrange the letters Jasmine? Okay, um, so this here is a seven letter word. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and we're going to assume no repetition. So we can't repeat the letters. So how many options are there for the first letter? Well, there are seven. For the next letter, there is six because we can't use the previous one. And then five because we can't use the previous two, three, four, three, two, one. So the number of ways to arrange jasmine is seven factorial. Please make sure you've understood this. So in this case, we're looking at how to arrange unique letters. So all of them are unique with and without repetition. Please watch our other video on probability to find out other counting me methods that we, or cases that we can look at. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.